Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to be learning about something pretty cool, specifically memory. More specifically, flags and definitions. So I'll write it up and explain it. So we want flag global sans plus plus. So the flag command sets data that's going to be stored. Global means it's stored like everywhere on every script. Every script that references it by the name sans will get the same value because it's global rather than, say, attached to a specific player or NPC. So we're setting it to plus plus, which just means increase it by one. You could also write plus one with colons around it like this. Now, to get the value, we're going to type global.flag sans. Global gets any tag related to, well, global events going on. Flag gets the specific flag value, same as the command, and sans is the flag we want. So save that. Let's try it out. Hello 3, hello 4, hello 5, hello 6. It, as you can see, it increases with each time we click the sand. Well, that's nice and simple. That's all you got to do to store information. You can also store temporary information called definitions. That looks like this. Define value as util.random.int1.25. So this tag, as we discussed earlier, will return a random number from 1 to 5. But we want to use this val the value returned by this tag several times in the same script. We're going to narrate def value. Def is short for definition, so it's the definition. So it gets the value of the definition that we named value. And later, you can narrate it again with def value, and it'll return the same thing because we used a definition rather than placing the tag in each time. I'll put it in each time just to show you the difference. So it's... well, that's bad luck. So it said 1 each time for the definition, but 5, then 4 when we put the tag in directly. And again, it's pretty straightforward. You can put any information here you want, like hello world. You could put values in quotes if you want spaces, of course. And if we try that, it says hello world each time. Also, you can do the same thing with flags. Flag sans hello world. If you want spaces here, you put quotes around the whole thing rather than just around hello world. So, let's narrate that. Well, that flag sans. We forgot global. There we go. You can also store a flag on each player. Well, first, let's reset the, the sans flag. You can also set flags on the player. Flag player sans plus 2. So we're going to narrate global equals global.flag sans well player equals player.flag sans. Global flags are stored everywhere of course. Player flags are only stored per, per player. So if another player was to run the script they'd see a different value than what I see. As you can see, each the global flag and the player flag change separately even though they have the same name because one's global and one's on the player. Something to remember is that when you define value as whatever, like this, this saves only for the current running script. It won't exist after the script finishes running. Flags, on the other hand, will stay forever even if you restart your server. The only way to get rid of them is to intentionally remove them, which is like this, with an exclamation mark after the colon. Let's see what it narrates now. Reload scripts, and 
It says null and null. Null means that the flag doesn't exist. Because we just removed it, of course. Another thing about flags is that there's a lot of different ways to set them. We remove some of the scrap. You can set them plus plus, as I said earlier. You can do minus minus to represent subtracting one, or minus a value to subtract. And if we reload scripts just to show you the subtracting, subtract five each time and is in negative number right now. Another thing to note about that is that it started at zero and then subtracted five because it wasn't set. When you don't have a flag set and you try to interact with it as if it were a number, it assumes the number is zero. That's just Denizen being smart and trying to figure things out for you. And that's one of the many cool things about Denizen, how it automatically figures out information that other programming or scripting languages wouldn't do. You can also do the star symbol to represent multiplication. Or you can do a slash symbol to represent division. Another important thing to note that's kind of advanced, but I'm going to cover it now anyway, is that flags are actually lists rather than just individual objects. So rather than having a value of, say, negative 0.8, it actually has a list value that starts with negative 0.8 and doesn't hold anything else at the moment. But we can add to that by using this symbol, which is an arrow pointing to the right. We just input a value there. And if we reload script and try it out, it's just showing us a value, which is strange because of how flags work. It doesn't actually work as you expected. It shows the last value in the list which in this case is just value because that's what we put it. If you want to see the full list, you have to type as list on the global.flag tag. So if we try that, we'll see it's now a list of negative 0.8 followed by value, followed by value, followed by value. And it keeps adding value. Now if we want to get rid of values from it, we can remove them by just putting the arrow in the other direction. So remove one each time, and now it's all out. You can also add a list of things directly using this symbol, which is just a pipe symbol. You can add value, 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 32, 42, 52. And now we can try that. All of them appeared in the list as part of the list. Where if you did just the arrow symbol, it would add this whole chunk as one entry in the list which would be rather problematic, because we want the whole list. If you want to get a specific entry from the list, you can just use the git tag, which is, say, git 7. Let's try that out. The value at the 7th spot in the list flag is 52. If we get the 6th spot, and remove this flag command, it will fill up the list pretty quickly, we get 42. There are a lot of different ways to manipulate lists, but this is just the absolute basics for right now. We'll later cover it in more detail, but for now, if you want to get ahead and see what else lists have to offer, just check out the internet relay chat, tag list dot, and monkeybot will show you all the different list options for tags. Or you can check on the website, which will have the full individual details shown in a big list. I'll link that in the description. So, that was a lot of information, but hopefully you can understand. Um, that's really all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you want to see more as they come out. Otherwise, just keep watching the tutorial video page. Bye.